Hey guys, welcome to another Gaging Gadgets Garmin Forerunner 45 review video. In this video, I'll be doing a complete overview of the Garmin Forerunner 45. I'll be going through all the settings, the menus, and the features on the watch so you get a good idea of what all those look like and what you can experience if you were to purchase this watch. In addition to that, I'll also be doing a quick comparison between this watch and the Garmin Forerunner 245 and 645, just on the way that they look and the size of them, things like that. Currently, the Garmin Forerunner 245 is available in two different sizes, a 39 millimeter watch face and then a 42 millimeter watch face. Both cost $199 on Amazon, so if this video helps you, please support me by using the link in the description. Two other things I want to note. First, I have done several tutorials on this watch, so if you would like to learn more or once you get the watch, if you have any questions about setting it up or different customizations you can do to it, check the description so that you can check out those tutorials. I've also done a very in-depth comparison between the 45 right here and then the Garmin Forerunner 2. 45. So if you're trying to decide between those two watches, I recommend watching the video below in the description. All right, so let's go in and get started. The first and probably most important thing on the watch is going to be the display, which on the Garmin Forerunner 45 is a one inch display, which is a lot smaller than some of the other Garmin watches. It does also have a lower resolution. So what you're gonna have is some of the edges on different things on the display may not be as smooth as they will be on some of the other Garmin watches, such as the Vivo Active 3 or the Forerunner 245, but it still does have a lot of colors to it. It's very vibrant and it has the ability to show live data, such as this current second, and your current heart rate, which you are able to see on the actual watch face. So you don't have to change any menus or anything, which is pretty cool. It also is an always on watch face. So you don't have to turn on the backlight to see it during the day. Even if you're in direct sunlight, the watch face will be very easy to read and you'll be able to see everything very clearly. The Garmin Forerunner 45 has five buttons. It has a light button for turning on and off the device and also controlling the light and accessing what's called a control menu. I'll show you that later. Then you also have three navigation buttons up, down, and then back right here. And then lastly, you have a starter stop button. This is for beginning activities and also selecting different menu items, things like that. The buttons on the Garmin Forerunner 245 are a plastic, which is to be expected with its low price range of 199, but it also allows it to be lightweight. The watch band for the Garmin Forerunner 45 is made out of the same material used for the other Forerunner watches. So the material is very strong, but also very soft. I've never had it irritate my skin or cause any issues. And it also does not hold too much dirt. If it holds any dirt, it's gonna be in these little slots for the buckle, but it's very easy to clean. Sometimes I'll just take it off while I'm in the shower and wash it off real quick and then put it back on. It's waterproof, so you don't have to worry about taking it in the shower or worry about swimming in the ocean or the pool. You can definitely go down to at least 20 meters with this with no issues. One thing about the watch band is it's not a quick connect like some of the other Garmin watches. You will have to unscrew it using a Phillips head. That also means that the band is gonna be proprietary, so you won't be able to use a standard 20 millimeter band, meaning that the choices you'll have for replacing these are gonna be a little bit limited, but that shouldn't be a problem. Looking at the back, you have the upgraded heart rate sensor that is available on all the new forerunners and you also have the new standard charging port. So this is the same charging port that is used on basically all of the other Garmin watches, meaning if you have to get a new replacement cable, it'll be really inexpensive, probably about five or $6 on Amazon. So that's a nice positive. The bezel right here does not provide much protection for the display. So that's just something to note. You might wanna get a nice screen protector. The bezel and then also the entire watch right here, the body are all made out of plastic. Now we'll do a quick comparison with the 245 right here on the left. As you can see, the actual display is much larger on the 245. The bezel is more robust and then the buttons are also going to be a stainless material. As you can see with the thickness right here, the 245 is a little bit thicker. It's also going to be a little bit heavier as well. And just one more comparison here, we have the 645 now, and it's going to be very similar to the 245, so not much difference there. Just wanted to show the contrast with the metal bezel and the size of the display. The 645 will also be a little bit thicker than the 45 as well. Another thing I want to point out about the 245 bands is that you have this kind of bend in it. So unlike some of the other Forerunner bands where it's just kind of like on a joint and it's loose, the 45 right here kind of has a permanent band in it, and I actually found the 45 to be a little bit more comfortable than the other Forerunner watches while I'm sleeping. When I wore this watch, I never had any issues with my arm falling asleep or anything like that. So I don't know if this band makes it a little bit more ergonomic, but I definitely felt it was more comfortable when sleeping with this watch. 
The buckle on the watch band for the 45 is also made out of a very strong metal. It's exactly the same as on the other Forerunners, so you don't have to have any worries there with the quality of this. So now that we've taken a closer look at the look and design of the Garmin Forerunner 45, let's go ahead and get into the menus and look at some of the features. Before we get too deep into the features, I just want to do a quick overall and say that I found that the activity tracking, the sleep tracking, and also the heart rate monitor are very accurate on this watch and comparable to the other Garmin watches that I've tested, such as the 245, the Instinct, the Vivo Active 3, and the 645. So no issues there. The steps are accurate. The heart rate monitor is accurate and the sleep tracking is very accurate. So the first thing we'll get into is the watch face here and how to customize those and then what's available to you. So to get into the watch faces, we need to open up the menu by holding the up button. And the first item will be watch face. So the built-in watch faces for the Garmin Forerunner 45 are very limited. You have only a few layouts that are available to you showing you those right now. And then what you find when you like, usually on a Garmin watch, you can customize all the data sets here so you can see you know, how many notifications you have or how many stairs you've climbed, different things like that, but that's not available on the 45. Really the only thing you can customize about the built-in watch faces is going to be the accent colors. So you can change that color that is around the data set. And as you can see, you're kind of limited to the colors there. So really that is going to be all the customization you can do to the built-in watch faces. But with the Garmin Forerunner 45, you do have access to the watch faces in the Garmin Connect IQ store. So these are gonna be third-party watches that have been designed by other people and they do allow you to have more looks and customized features. So this is gonna be one of them right here. As you can see, it looks very different. And that means you can even get some watch faces like this. This is a watch face called Data Lover. It's probably my favorite watch face. As you can see, it has sunrise sunset, it has graphs, it has move bar and all kinds of data. You can completely customize this to show exactly what you want. So this kind of watch face is available for you to download and it actually works very well in the Garmin Forerunner 45. So for a less expensive watch, it definitely has some of those really cool features that are available on some of the more expensive Garmin watches. One thing though about the Garmin Connect IQ store, you're limited to only the watch faces. So you can't have any of the apps, the widgets, anything like that. Those are not available to you. The only thing that is available there is going to be the watch faces. But in my opinion, that is probably one of the most important things about the Garmin Connect IQ store because it adds so much information and usefulness to the watch. So now that we've talked about the watch faces, let's get into the widgets. Basically a widget is going to be a screen on the watch that just shows information. So from the watch face, I just use the up or down button to go to the different widgets. As you can see, this is the calendar widget. When you sync your watch to the phone, it'll pull over any calendar information, reminders, things like that, and it'll show them here. You can then select into them and see more information about them. So if I keep going up, we have a step widget, and as you can see, it shows the move bar. Basically, the move bar is just going to be something that tells you how long you've been sitting without moving. So the first big line is going to be one hour. It also vibrate and tell you to move, and then every small line after that is going to be 15 minutes up to two hours. And depending on how long you've been sitting, it will require more walking or movement before you can clear those bars. So if I select into this widget, I can actually see more information about my past walking and steps. I don't have much information on this because I've actually been wearing the 645 recently just to test that out. So it's lacking a little bit of information. After that, we have a weather widget and this does require a connection to your phone, but you can see the current temperature, the highs and lows, wind speeds, and also percentage for rain. And then a little icon kind of giving you a brief overview of what it's gonna look like. You can select into this and see hourly for the weather and then also daily. The next widget we have is going to be the notification widgets. So one cool thing about the Garmin Forerunner 45, if you have it connected to your phone, you can view any of the notifications that your phone gets on your watch. So I'm back to the watch face and say I get a text message. It'll show up like this. So it shows who sent the text and then I can view it. I can also select in using the start or stop button and I can scroll through the text message and read all of it if I want to. As you can see, the emojis do come through so you can kind of see what those look like. This is a lower resolution watch, so it's not gonna look that great, but you can kind of get the idea of what they were trying to say. Now, one of the limitations of the 45 over maybe the Vivo Active 3 or even other Garmin watches is you don't have the ability to respond to text messages. So those watches will allow you to 
create pre-configured messages, and then you can send those back directly from the watch. You can't do that on this watch. All you can do is dismiss the text message. That'll also dismiss the notification on your phone as well. But again, the notifications work with every single app on your phone. You can actually configure the watch so that some applications on your phone don't trigger notifications on your watch. It's pretty cool. The next widget we have is just going to be a summation of your day. So this would right here show you all the steps that you've gotten, how many calories you burn, the distance, stairs climbed, everything. You can select into it and see all kinds of information about it. I really like this widget because it's a great way to get a good overall glance at how your day's doing from an activity standpoint. Next we have the heart rate monitor. So this will show the last four hours of your heart rate. It'll show the high, the low, and then your current heart rate. And if you select into it, it'll show the last seven days of your resting heart rate which is pretty cool. Nice to be able to see that. Next we have health stats. So this is going to be a basically a summation of your heart rate, your stress level, and the body battery. Heart rate we've already gone over. Stress level, basically it's going to use the heart rate monitor to determine your stress and it kind of will do a quick measurement if you stay still just to see how you're doing. But with stress right here, one of my favorite things about it is you can select into it. You could see the last four hours, but it also has a relaxed timer. So if you select this, it'll kind of guide you. So you select that, you start it, and then it will do guided breathing for one minute to kind of help you chill out. It's a good way to just relax. It also vibrates on the watch when you need to change from breathing in or breathing out so that you don't have to look at it. You can kind of close your eyes and just relax for a second. So I do like that a lot. The body battery right here is kind of a new algorithm thing that Garmin has put out where it uses all of the activity tracking, the heart rate, steps, and your sleep, kind of determine your current energy level how much of an energy reservoir you had when you woke up in the morning from sleeping and then how much you've used. So it's pretty cool. After that, the next widget is going to be Garmin Coach and this needs to be set up in the Garmin Connect app. This is really cool. It can train you to do a 5K, a 10K, and then a half marathon. It has videos to help train you. I have a tutorial going over Garmin Coach and how to set it up so you can see what that looks like. It's very useful and I highly recommend it to anybody trying to get into running. This is a perfect watch for beginner runners for sure. The next widget is just going to be a history widget. This will kind of combine your steps and activities so you can kind of see how you're doing and everything. It also will allow you to click in. You can see the activities you've done in the last week and your totals. So if you ran and biked, you can see distance totals, different things like that. So it's pretty cool to be able to see that. After that, we just have an activity-based widget, which just shows your last run. You can select in there and see more information about it. The next widget is going to be weekly intensity minutes. And like I said, I haven't been wearing this watch. And what an intensity minute is going to be where your heart rate hit a certain threshold for a certain amount of time. They recommend getting 150 of those a week. And then finally, the last widget we have is just going to be calories burned. So you can kind of see how many of those were from activities versus resting, which is just being alive. You can select in and see how many calories were burned in the last week as well. So those are the widgets on the Garmin 4Runner 45. Now that we've gone through those, let's go to the control menu. So the control menu is basically a quick menu. You can open it very quickly by holding the light button. And then as you can see, I can cycle through all these options here and it's just a quick way to open these up. So while we're in here, I'll show you a couple different of the features. The first few items are gonna be the timer, the stopwatch, and then you can set alarms with the alarm clock. And just real quick, the alarm does allow you to have it do a noise or just vibrate. And you can also snooze on this watch. So this is some of the biggest questions I have. And yes, all of those are available. After that, you can turn off the Bluetooth and then you can put it into do not disturb mode, which is where no notifications, no vibration, nothing like that. It's a good thing to turn on if you're going to be in a meeting or doctor's appointment, but you can also have it automatically turn on during a configurable sleep time. So I do like to do that as well. Next in the control menu, we have a very, very useful feature called find my phones. So if I turn this on, it's going to make my phone start making a noise, also vibrating, and then the light is going to flash. So it makes my phone easier to find from that standpoint. But in addition to that, it also shows a proximity meter. So this green to red right here, as the phone gets farther away, it'll actually show that on the proximity meter. So it's kind of a how hot and cold you are to your phone. It's very cool and it's very responsive as well. If I hit the back button, it'll stop all of the activity on my phone. So you don't have to worry about it just constantly being annoying or something like that. The next feature we have is Garmin Assistance. And this is a very new feature that Garmin has just created and it's very useful as well. So basically Garmin Assistance is a way to alert your emergency contacts if you're in trouble. You configure the emergency contacts in the Garmin Connect app. You can have up to three and you can add email and phone. So it'll send emails, it'll send text messages. So if I hit this button right here, what it's gonna do is it's going to trigger a countdown. Let's see that. 
a five second countdown before it starts sending alerts out to my emergency contacts. I'm going to cancel that just so I don't freak out my wife. But the text messages and emails will let the emergency contacts know, hey, you need assistance. It'll also start recording your live location with the watch and sending that to the emergency contacts. So they can actually click in and view the live location as it's happening online anywhere in the world. All you need for this to work is a connection to your phone with the watch and then for your phone to have internet. If the watch for some reason can't get GPS because you're in a building, it'll let the emergency contact know that the watch is having trouble getting GPS, but it'll continue to look for GPS signal. And as soon as it gets it, it's gonna send it to your emergency contacts. To me, this is something that everybody should have set up and they should know how to use it. And it could be a reason for me to decide to get a Garmin watch over some of the other watches. In addition to assistance, you also have incident detection where the watch will determine if you have fallen during an activity and it basically just triggers Garmin assistance so all of your emergency contacts will get notification and it starts recording your location. So very cool features there. And those are all the items available. You also have things such as manual sync so you can have it sync with your phone and you can lock the keys so none of the buttons do anything. That might be useful if you're doing boxing or something where the buttons get hit a lot. So that's basically all of the things in the control menu. On the Garmin Forerunner 45, you have no way of customizing the control menu like you do on some of the other watches. So you can't add or remove any new features. All right, so now that we've gone through the control menu, the widgets and the watch faces, let's go through the different activities available, such as running or walking on this watch. Before I get into it on the watch, I need to show you it on your phone because you actually select the available activities on your phone first. So I'm in the activity options for the Garmin Forerunner 45 in the Garmin Connect app on my phone. And this is an app available on iPhone and Android. It's how you sync the watch with your phone. So let's get into the displayed activities here. And these are the activities you'll be able to choose on the Forerunner 45. So as you can see, I have these currently selected and yoga is one of the ones on here, but then you also have the ability to choose indoor track, bike indoors, walk indoors, elliptical, stair stepper, and then a catch all, which is other. You are limited to all of these activities. You cannot create new activities. So there's no way to like copy activities and then rename it. But really this list should be good enough. If you're gonna be doing any kind of swimming or anything like that, you can always choose other. To view the activities on the Forerunner 45, all you need to do is hit the start or stop button. It'll bring them up. We can scroll through them, see what they look like. So if I go into run here, what it's doing is it's showing me that it's waiting for GPS. So it's trying to establish a GPS connection. When you're outside, it will not take too long for that to happen. So no issues there. But we can go down to the options and go into all of the different settings for the activities. First is going to be workouts. And this is where we can set up interval workouts and also workouts that you establish on your phone in the Garmin Connect app. You can do really detailed interval workouts in there. I do have tutorials on that, so check the description. But as you can see in intervals, we can edit them on the watch. So you have the ability to select the distance, a rest period, how often it's repeated, your warm up and cool down. So if you want to walk for five minutes, both as your warm up and cool down, you can do that in there. In my workouts, we can go in there. You can do drill workouts, run, run, walk, different things like that. And you can also select into these and view them and also delete them. So I can view this. It has a warm up, a run, and then a cool down. So really cool. Very customizable, great way for beginner runners to get into running. And then after that, if you're doing one of the Garmin coach activities, where it will give you a running program of maybe 12 weeks, you'll have the ability to actually see your future workouts on your watch. It's a really great way to prepare for your next run and see what you have in your future. After that, we can customize the data screens that will be displayed on the watch during a run. So unlike the other Forerunner watches, such as the 245, it's not very customizable. But basically what I can do is I can select in here, choose the layout. So I can choose a layout with three data sets, one data set, or two data sets. I'll do three. Once I select the layout, I can select what each of those fields have in them. So the available fields are going to be timer, distance, pace, calories, heart rate, heart rate zone, lap time, lap distance, lap pace, average pace, cadence, steps, and time of day. So those are all the available data sets for your activities that are going to be available for this watch. So while it's more limited than the Forerunner 245 or the Vivo Active 3, you still get a lot of information there. So that was the data screens. After that, we have alerts. And that's where you can have the watch alert you for several different things. So we have several different alerts. We can set up heart rate alerts. That's where if you hit a certain heart rate or you can have it stay within a heart rate zone. So if you want it to be in heart rate zone one, two, three, four, 
or custom. This could be very useful and it's actually really customizable. After that, we have run walk. So if you wanna set a run time, you wanna run for five minutes, then you could set a walk time and walk for five minutes or something like that. It's up to you. Time alerts are where it alerts you for an amount of time that you've configured. Same thing for distance. If you wanna run a 5K and after that you're done, it'll alert you after you ran a 5K or whatever customizable distance you choose. Calories, same thing. You select the amount of calories you wanna burn and then it will alert you once you've burned all those calories. So that was alerts. After that, we have laps. You can set up auto laps and it can also be configured to be kilometers. And then the lap key. So if you wanna do a custom lap, you can hit the back button and it'll do a lap during your activities. After that, in the activity settings, we have auto pause, and this will pause your activity if you stop. I love this because, you know, there's several times I'll be running on a trail and you see the same people, maybe you see a friend, you'll stop to talk to your friend for a little bit, but you don't wanna mess up your activity data to include that extra time. So it'll notice you're stopping and kind of just stop the activity from tracking for a little bit. So that's pretty cool. And then lastly, we have GPS. So this is actually really important and it kind of makes the big difference between why people get a Garmin watch. You have several different types of GPS available. So you have standard GPS, but you also have the ability to add GLONASS and Galileo, which will give you more accurate tracking through GPS. So if you're not getting great accuracy with just GPS alone, you can try adding these and see if you get an improvement. It also will speed up the process of the initial sync with GPS. So really cool that it does include those for the low price range of 199. So that was a quick overview of the activities available on the watch as well as the activity settings. So now we've gone through basically everything in the Garmin 4Runner 45. We've gone through the watch faces, the widgets, the control menu, all the activities. I do wanna discuss a couple other features. One of the things I really love about this watch is that it has the ability to control the music and audio on my phone. So that includes podcasts, Spotify, even YouTube videos. And I do find that to be useful because if I'm on a run, usually I'm gonna have my phone with me and I'm gonna be listening to music through Bluetooth headphones. All of that can be controlled on the Garmin 4Runner 45 and it works really well. So all you need to do to access the music is to hold down the down button. That's gonna bring it up here. So I'm using Spotify on my phone and as you can see, it's kind of getting that information from Spotify for the song name, the band, and also how long I've been listening to it. And it also has kind of a progress bar around the perimeter of the watch face showing you how much of the song is left. So if I hit play, using the start or stop button. It's gonna start the music on my phone. I can also change the track. Then if I want to, I can even go into the menu here and change the volume on the phone. You can turn it up, you can turn it down, which I find to be really useful. Another way I use this is if I'm in the shower, I'll have my phone play music and I can change the song and I can turn it down, turn it up in the shower. It's really cool to have that ability. Another thing I wanna talk about with the 4Runner 45 is the battery life. Garmin claims seven days of battery life for this device and that's in smartwatch mode. So that's without any activities or GPS being used. That's just with notifications and the activity tracking. I do find that to be accurate and there are ways of extending that. One of the tutorials I did is actually a video describing how to extend that battery life. But one of the limitations is only about 13 hours of battery life when you're using GPS. So if you're doing several activities a week and then you're using it for notifications also during the week, you're probably gonna get around four or five days of battery life out of this, which really isn't that bad. It's better than some of the competitors and charging this takes about a minute a percent. So about an hour and a half to fully charge it, which I really don't think is bad. Overall, I really do like the Garmin 4Runner 45. I think it has a lot of functionality. I like that you can add the customized watch faces. I do, however, think that if you're looking at this watch, it's probably worth it to look at the Vivo Active 3. The Vivo Active 3 has a lot of features that this watch does not have, and it's around the same price range, so it's worth checking out. I've also done several reviews and tutorials on the Vivo Active 3, so I'll put those in the description as well. If you have any questions about the Garmin 4Runner 45, leave a comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm going to add an Amazon affiliate link to the description of this video so you can find this exact watch on Amazon. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing to my channel, Gaging Gadgets. More gadget reviews and tech tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.